Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM, where we're in the midst of our annual Christmas week holiday movie marathon. We just had Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck in Remember the Night. Up next, a lesser known Christmas movie with a decidedly out of season title from Republic Pictures in 1945, The Cheaters. Don't let that title fool you. This is not a movie about people ambushing their unfaithful lovers with a camera crew in restaurant parking lots. By the way, that was a real show called Cheaters, where hidden cameras would catch cheating spouses and expose them with their infuriated partners present on TV for more than 15 seasons. I mean, what a time to be alive. All right, out of that rabbit hole, it's Christmas. The 1945 movie, The Cheaters, is the story of a well-established New York family. The oldest daughter helps a man down on his luck by bringing him home for Christmas, even though her family is now struggling financially. The story came from a husband and wife screenwriting team, Albert Ray and Francis Highland in 1941. They saw it as a potential vehicle for British actress Binnie Barnes. Paramount saw it as an ideal picture for Carol Lombard and John Barrymore. Tragically, both Lombard and Barrymore died in 1942. Eventually, the picture landed at Republic, known for its B-movies, serials, and westerns. Production on The Cheaters didn't begin until February of 1945. By then, the screenwriter Albert Ray had died, leaving his widow, Frances Hyland, to write the screenplay herself. Biddy Barnes was alive but unavailable, so her role went to another BB, Billy Burke, teamed with character actor Joseph Schildkraut, winner of the 1937 Best Supporting Actor Oscar for the Life of Emile Zola. This one is from 1945, also with Eugene Pellett, directed by Joseph Kane, The Cheaters. The unmistakable gravelly voice of J.C. Pigeon in The Cheaters is that of character actor Eugene Pellett. Pellett's body of work includes 260 silent and sound pictures, though he only appeared in two more films after The Cheaters before retiring from acting in 1946. According to director Otto Preminger, Pellett used a racial slur to refer to a black actor, Clarence Muse, and refused to sit next to him at lunch during production of In the Meantime, Darling, from 1944. Preminger said he went to Fox studio boss Daryl Zanuck, who fired Paulette. Out of the business, Paulette moved to Oregon and lived in a well-stocked compound. There was food, cattle, bunkers. All of it was designed by Paulette in an effort to survive a Soviet nuclear attack on the United States, which he was convinced was imminent. A couple of years later, no attack, moved back to L.A., but he didn't work. Paulette died in 1954. Coming up, Humphrey Bogart, Aldo Ray, and Peter Ustinov have the title roles in an unusual Christmas story. We're No Angels from 1955 is next on TCM. Next on TCM, We're No Angels, then Lady in the Lake, and later, Roadblock. TCM's got writers uh, something tonight. <laughs> 